Hey, y'all. Welcome to my dressing room right here at the Hudson Theater, Head Over Heels on Broadway. It's me, Peppermint, and I'm so glad you could join me. Come on in. It's a tight squeeze, I know, but I want to show you all around where I get ready every single day, eight shows a week on Broadway. It is such an adventure. I think my life has just come so full circle. I moved to New York to become an actor. I went to college for musical theater performance years and years ago. And then I found my way to nightclubs and drag, which I'd been doing for more than 20 years before I decided to audition for Drag Race, which obviously changed my life, gave me a huge platform, and honestly, I was happy. I felt, I felt like I had, you know, done what I needed to do. Fan notes and fan mail, cast pictures here, just to kind of decorate the space, just like we did on Drag Race. Over here, I have my sort of memorabilia wall. <laughs> We're done. And so it feels really full circle to be on Broadway, kind of connecting my drag persona and myself as a trans woman to a Broadway show that talks about gender in such a positive and progressive way, includes a lot of my drag flair, and doesn't really ask me to minimize who I am in order to be in it. And it actually asks me to go bigger. And I like that. Look at that glitter. People think I have rhinestones on. It's glitter. And I make it myself. Aloe vera gel and alcohol. Rub the aloe vera gel on, drink the alcohol. It works real nice. And this is my costume closet. I have some of my favorite looks. Obviously, I don't live here, even though it feels like I live here because I'm here eight shows a week. I am very blessed and happy to have my own dressing space here at the theater. It is the oldest still standing theater on Broadway. So space is very limited, we should say. But that didn't stop me from turning it into my home. I brought pretty much everything that I would need and made it work in that space. So if I got stuck at the theater or couldn't go home, I could easily live in there as a survival bunker, fallout shelter for probably a good 10 or 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> right here is the infamous promo extravaganza. This is made by Angel Ayala and it's yards and yards and yards of glorious fabric. I actually had to get sewn into this. There's no closures or anything. It was probably the most scary thing I've ever worn because you laugh and one stitch pops. I'm open-minded to pretty much anything if a designer brings me something, but it has to have key elements that work well for my body. It has to be, have the right cut. It's important for me uh, to accentuate what I think works the best on me. I like to show as much skin as I can without showing any skin, if that makes sense. <laughs> this is from our premiere party. This is also made by Angel Ayala. And I just wanted something that was like colorful, not my normal colors, not my normal turquoise and lavenders that um, was cheap. It was so hot in our <laughs> premiere party. I don't know if the air conditioner was on or what, but I was sweating. And when this gets wet with sweat, it smells like fish. It's the weirdest smell ever. So I was like stinking up that party, but I felt pretty, you know what I mean? Going to Drag Race was all about how much I can fit into a suitcase. So you can't really do a lot of structured things, a lot of things that would be kind of over the top and stick out, at least I couldn't. So the finale was my opportunity to do that because I didn't have to bring that many costumes with me. I wanted to do something that was a little bit of a play on my Club Kid look, which was red and white stripe, very peppermint. And so I decided to kind of go with winter green colors. And this is what I came up with. I went to Garrow Sparrow and he design this creation and it's like a three-part dress which weighs about 17,000 pounds and there's the train 
There's a corset built into the dress, which made it really convenient. Just kind of slip it on. And you know, there's even padding built into the dress because once you're in it, like there's nothing you can do. And I had to have three people lace me up. The laces go all the way down below the booty and just suck you in, just like that. For the most part, I just like to have, you know, as much freedom as possible to, to do what I do best. Sticking to the rules and having a well-charted out performance and idea of what exactly has to happen doesn't usually bode well with, with me. <laughs> Let me show you some of my wigs and headpieces. This is from season nine, the gayest ball ever. Uh, rainbow challenge, and that was one part of the runway. So I had a head-to-toe like gold corset with a rainbow sash that went around. It was very beautiful. Oh, the wig that I wore, it was actually originally uh, a Marco's wig piece uh, from this finale of season nine. And I had it kind of like in this updo kind of dollop of whipped cream right on top of my head. I decided to take this wig and have it restyled again in more of a Grecian sort of look to match my dress for the premiere party of Head Over Heels. The costumes in the show, they're not really typical drag costumes, but my character isn't a drag queen. It brings me outside of my comfort zone a bit, but it still has some of those really important elements, Swarovski crystals and jewels and rhinestones and glitter. So the first time I come out, I'm dressed as a snake. And it's also a multi-layered three-part costume. So this first part, I put on this corset here, and it's really beautiful. There's some scaling on it and crystals. Ooh. And then <laughs> this jacket here which is like kind of a coat dress. It's a few different layers in one. It's really heavy. Gosh, that is really heavy. <laughs> but there's this iridescent layer underneath, which a lot of people don't really see that much. I'm a stone whore. I really overstoned to the point where we there's a taste issue going on, but I don't really care. <laughs> we have projectile crystals in the show, and they come flying off, they get stuck to your foot, stuck to your butt, and my fabulous dresser Diane recrystals them every night. She actually lives here, don't allow her to leave, and she crystals these every single night. Ariane Phillips, who designed the costumes, she's worked with some of the best, Madonna, Lenny Kravitz, I mean, you know, you name it, she's worked with them. So to have her designing my costumes and the costumes for the show, feels like such an honor. This is the headpiece that I wear with that snake costume. <sighs> There's no wig. I don't wear any wigs in this show ah! until the very end, and then I get to wear a wig. I gagged when they said that. They are like, no wig, and I was like. I was surprised how willing she was to collaborate with me in terms of, you know, modifying something, making sure that it fits right, and making sure that we were putting our best foot forward, our best heel forward, I should say. <laughs> These are the first shoes that I wear. These are some crystalled, Swarovski crystalled boots. Here is my heel. She's chunky, but she's high. Not the first time I've ever said that. <laughs> This Broadway opportunity landed in my lap, seemed like so perfectly. I don't know if I'm perfect for the role, but the role is definitely perfect for me because it encompasses so many things that I love. Having the opportunity to do that every night, it's a dream come true. I don't know how it could get any better, but I'm, I'm open, you know? Maybe a movie here or there, maybe some more music videos, you know? But if it all stopped today, I'd be, you know, I couldn't complain. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my favorite looks from season nine and some of my fabulous looks from Head Over Heels on Broadway. But now I gotta get to the show and you guys have to leave. So get the hell out of my dressing room!